Fernando Alonso's new contract at Aston Martin until the end of the 2026 season was not only a surprise, but has had serious knock-on effects throughout the driver market going into the 2025 season. Fernando's new deal with Aston Martin on paper says that he'll be driving for the team until the end of the 2026 season. But it actually in fact seems to have an undefined amount of years as he said that this is the longest contract he's ever signed in Formula 1. So this seems to suggest that once he's finished up driving in Formula 1, he'll take a sideways step either into the World Endurance Championship team to contest for Le Mans, or maybe go up into an ambassadorial or management role within the Aston Martin company. It did catch us by surprise though, as everyone really thought he was pushing more for either the potential Red Bull opening or even the Mercedes. The speculation stemmed from the fact that Aston Martin, after their fantastic start last season, by midpoint they were starting to tail off a bit until they pulled it back at the last couple of races, and this season they've been consistent point scorers but nothing more. And even Aston Martin's boss, Mike Crack, even suggested the day before the announcement that the team needed to do more to keep Alonso and provide him with a better car with any chance to keep him for the long term. So when it was announced that he signed a new deal with Aston Martin, that was a big piece of the jigsaw puzzle that was put into place, but caught many people off guard, including ourselves. With Fernando doing this, this also really closes off the Aston Martin team, as no one really expects Lance Stroll to be kicked out of there as long as his father owns the team. So with the many drivers that may have been eyeing up the potential in that team, i.e. Carlos Sainz, or maybe even Yuki Tsunoda if he decided to leave the Red Bull family, this closes off the team at least for a further two seasons. And so with Fernando's announcement, we thought we would cover in this video the knock-on effects that it will have for the drivers throughout the grid and the jigsaw pieces that we thought might go into place, but now we've had to think again. So I certainly think the first piece of the indication going from this is that Max Verstappen is going to be staying at Red Bull, at least for now. The speculation that was going around after the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix was that Lawrence Stroll, backed by Aramco's billions, was opening a checkbook up that was blank for Max Verstappen and Adrian Newey to join the team. Now, I don't mean to be disrespectful to Fernando Alonso, but if the team realistically had any chance of getting Max Verstappen in their car, then from a marketability point of view because of his world championships and because they'll get longer out of him because he's much younger, they would have kicked Fernando out of the team for Max Verstappen, without a doubt. And despite all of the recent murmurings and rumours going around about him being unhappy and clashing with Christian Horner and the management team there and wanting out of his contract, I think personally Max Verstappen has settled where he is, which is another reason why Fernando Alonso decided to commit to Aston Martin as he realised that the Red Bull seat that he so long coveted several times before is not available. Another added element to this would be the fact that Max Verstappen in no way, shape or form would want Fernando Alonso as his teammate at Red Bull, which in my mind signifies that he's 100% staying. At this stage I would also be extremely surprised if it turned out that Max Verstappen was even considering the Mercedes drive, but we'll come on to that in a second. Leading on to this, I think it's becoming clear now that Sergio Perez is about to get at least another year at Red Bull. Now one thing can be certain, you never really get job security at Red Bull, but I think he'll get another year just purely because they've gone from criticising him saying that he's not doing enough to keep his job to now all of a sudden saying that he's being a fantastic number two and doing what he needs to do. And with Sergio, you can't really ask him to do any more than that. And I think for this reason, he'll get a number two as a good understudy to Max as he's not really that much competition to him. And then maybe after one more year, we'll then go off into retirement. If Red Bull did decide to make a switch, I think either way, I think Sergio Perez will leave the grid and I think he'll go off into the sunset. But for now, going along with the indications that are out there at the moment and the fact that they don't seem to be pursuing many people across the grid, apart from making sounds that they'll take someone out of the Red Bull scheme, I think they'll settle for what they know and keep Sergio alongside Max Verstappen for 2025. There was only one man I thought might have been competition for Sergio Perez and that's this man, Daniel Ricciardo who I think, unfortunately, his days are numbered. I don't think we can be in any doubt at all that if Red Bull had their way, especially Christian Horner, as he loves Daniel Ricciardo, that I think they really wanted him to go in there and blow the socks off of Yuki Tsunoda so that they could place him in the Red Bull team alongside Max Verstappen. And there may even be a chance of this happening, but Daniel Ricciardo would have to pull his socks up quick, as we're only four races into the season, but already it's looking like his career is coming to an end. Unfortunately though for Daniel Ricciardo, although I like him and he's one of the most likeable people in Formula 1, I think he'll exit the sport at the end of the 2024 season. Ever since he took the big gamble to leave the Red Bull family to go to Renault and then McLaren, it's just not gone right and he's completely lost the mojo that once made him a fantastic prospect on the grid. Although he may never have been world champion material, I definitely think he should have won more races if he'd have stayed at Red Bull. But unfortunately, this is what happens when a driver follows the money. Sorry, the project. And unfortunately, at this stage, I think it's killed his career once and for all. 
I think absolutely Red Bull wanted Daniel Ricciardo in their seat next year. But on current performances, you would have to put Yuki Tsunoda in that seat if they decided to make the change from Sergio Perez. As Daniel Ricciardo this year has been outqualified 4-0 and is just nowhere near the pace of Yuki this year. And then this puts the team in a really sticky position. As if Yuki Tsunoda can't move up, you can't get rid of him because this would really upset Honda. And looking over Daniel Ricciardo's shoulder is Liam Lawson, who allegedly has been promised that if he'd just be patient in 2024, he's guaranteed a race seat in 2025. So realistically, unless something really happens and he drastically improves, Red Bull are going to have to take Daniel Ricciardo out of that seat and put Liam Lawson there, unless they're prepared to pay someone like Williams to take Lawson on loan for a couple of years just to give him a drive on the grid. Unfortunately though for Daniel, I think time's coming to an end and as the 24 season comes to a close, I think he'll be retiring. Another man who I think has been severely impacted by Fernando Stay at Aston Martin is this man, Carlos Sainz. Now realistically, although he's been mentioned for the Red Bull seat to replace Sergio Perez, I don't ever think this was a realistic possibility because as we know, the Sainz and the Verstappen families don't actually get on and during their time at Toro Rosso, back when they were both learning the ropes, apparently it was a very poisonous atmosphere and I don't think Red Bull would really seriously have put Carlos Sainz in the car alongside Max Verstappen. I think the team would definitely have been interested if Max Verstappen had left the team, but if Max stays, Carlos definitely won't go there. Recent speculation is, is that Carlos Sainz has been offered a one-year contract from Mercedes. And at the time, both the Spaniards were both sniffing around a Mercedes drive, with Fernando and Carlos both interested in the drive. But with Mercedes being seemingly on a downward spiral, and Aston Martin in the opposite, with a lot of financial capital being put in into the team, with a new wind tunnel, new factory, and their new Honda Works partnership coming in 2026... Probably, if you had your choice, you would actually go to Aston Martin, who are on the up, rather than Mercedes, who are on their way down at the moment. And so with Fernando Alonso now committing his future to Aston Martin for the long term, this creates yet another logjam in the driver market, and now Carlos is looking at probably two potential options to stay on the grid. As I just mentioned, it's been rumoured by the Italian press that he's been offered a one-year deal to join Mercedes for the 2025 season with the option of one more year after. And this is rumoured to be that Mercedes are waiting to see what happens with Kimi Antonelli and whether he would be prepared to step up to a Formula 1 seat with Mercedes in 2026 or on the unlikely scenario that Max Verstappen becomes available going into the new regulations. Allegedly, Carlos is against this and is actually preferring that he would want a two-year contract with an option of a one, as he's fed up with moving around the grid on short-term contracts all the time. And in fairness, who can blame him as he does deserve a long-term contract, but this then really only leads him with one potential option, and that's the stake F1 team that will soon in 2026 become the Audi Works team. And so with Carlos, unfortunately, I think he's probably going to get the rough end of the stick, as with Max Verstappen staying at Red Bull and Sergio Perez getting a stay of execution, and then Aston Martin then securing Fernando, which closes off that route. Unfortunately, I think Carlos has got no choice but to take the Audi deal. At this stage in his career, with such a long-term project until Audi get it right, which they inevitably will because they win in everything that they compete in, You've got to hope that they get it right sooner rather than later, otherwise it could kill off his career. Another thing that Fernando staying at Aston Martin does as well, is I think, kills off any potential comeback for Sebastian Vettel. Rumours have been rife that Sebastian Vettel is now toying with the idea of making a comeback and has in fact tested for the World Endurance Championship Porsche team. And all the indications seem to be that Sebastian Vettel is going to be taking on the Le Mans 24 hour this year with Porsche. But with a return to track action and his testing recently with Porsche, he's not even denying now that this is wetting his appetite for a potential return. But with Fernando staying at Aston Martin, I think this limits the opportunities on where Seb Vettel could actually return. As a multi-time champion, Sebastian Vettel is not going to want to return to the grid at the back. Back. With Fernando now ruling himself out of the Mercedes drive, realistically, probably Sebastian Vettel has got his eye on the Mercedes seat, if anything at all. But at Mercedes, being that the way they seem to have negotiated with Carlos Sainz about only wanting to give him a one-year deal, I don't think Sebastian Vettel would go for this either. And as a multi-time champion, surely he would be due more respect to at least get two or three years as a crack to see if he can still cut it. Mercedes seem to be more intent on bringing up Kimi Antonelli at some point. And so whoever does take that seat to replace Lewis Hamilton knows they're on borrowed time as soon as they take it. If you were going to go and put two and two together, you would say, well, he's testing for Porsche in the World Endurance Championship for Le Mans, and their sister brand Audi is about to enter F1, and we all know that Audi would prefer to have a German driver on the grid if possible. And so could one potential option for him to return to the grid be with the Audi F1 team? But then you would have to put in the factor of that you would have to toil around at the back of the grid until Audi get it right, as the stake F1 team is certainly not worthy of Sebastian Vettel's talents. 
Personally, myself, I can't see that happening, as I think Sebastian Vettel wouldn't really want to be toiling around at the back of the grid, waiting for the Audi project to become right. And unfortunately, I don't think he'll have the years on his side for him to wait until that happens. In all fairness, if it's true that they would prefer a German driver in the car, I think in all likelihood, this man would be Nico Hülkenberg. And so although I think it would be great to see Seb back in a Formula 1 car, I think it's extremely unlikely, and even more so now. And so with this in mind, I think it's extremely likely that Kimi Antonelli will be promoted to the Mercedes team, providing he does well enough in Formula 2. Toto Wolff has even said himself that there's a lot of good drivers that are now being locked into contracts, which would have otherwise have been options. And this obviously seemingly indicates that he knew about Fernando Alonso's contract renewal at Aston Martin. Adding the fact as well that Toto Wolff has said that the current position of Mercedes being in a rebuild means the pressure is off Antonelli in his first year in F1. And I think this is all pushing more likely that Antonelli will be promoted to the Mercedes F1 team as he's their next big protege to partner George Russell at Mercedes. And I do think this is the reason why Fernando never pursued the Mercedes drive any further as he knew straight away that if he got the Mercedes drive he was on borrowed time and this was the reason why he left the Alpine F1 project as they clearly told him that you'd only ever get the drive temporary whilst they waited for Oscar Piastri to be on loan at someone like Williams until he was ready for the Alpine drive and so Fernando obviously clearly knew he wasn't going to be the main man at Mercedes as also George Russell was being primed although I think mistakenly to be the team leader eventually of Mercedes. I think this is further added to when you consider the speculation over Carlos Sainz's future being that they're only willing to give him a one or two year deal. So they're clearly unsure what to do with Kimi Antonelli and he's their preferred target. It all just depends on how well he does in Formula 2 this year. They're making it clear that he's their long term future, especially as he's about to embark on a testing program in an old F1 machinery to the current regulations. And it all depends on how well he does in his Formula 2 championship this year, whether he gets enough super license points. And so there we have it. That's what I think is a knock on effect for Fernando Alonso signing a new extension with the Aston Martin team. What my predictions are worth. I think that once all the musical chairs are finished, I think Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen will stay in an unchanged lineup at Red Bull. I think Carlos Sainz will end up having no choice but to take on the Audi project, possibly alongside Nico Hülkenberg. I think Mercedes will deliberate too long, and after losing out on Fernando Alonso, I think they'll also lose out on Carlos Sainz. They will then have no choice but to take Kimi Antonelli on, providing he's got the license points required. And unfortunately, I think any fans' hopes of Sebastian Vettel making a comeback to the sport will lead to nothing, as I think he'll more than likely to go on to the World Endurance Championship with a more flexible programme around his family. And unfortunately with all of this I think talents like Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly will have no chance to get in a step up the grid and will end up having to stick with the Alpine F1 team. Although if rumours are true Esteban Ocon has upset the Renault management after sniffing around the Mercedes seat and they haven't yet taken up his option for 2025. And unfortunately even if Mercedes were desperate in an emergency I don't think they would call on Mick Schumacher as I think his days in F1 are numbered. If he doesn't even get the opportunity to go to Audi being a German and their desires to have a German driver, I think his days in F1 are numbered. The only caveat to this would be is if it is true that Esteban Ocon has upset the Alpine and Renault management, then maybe Mick Schumacher may get a transfer to the F1 team at the expense of Esteban Ocon. But I do find this extremely unlikely to ever happen as I think unfortunately Mick Schumacher has tarnished his reputation with one too many crashes. Let us know in the comments who you think should be where and what you would like in the ideal world. And also thank you for listening to the video and please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and all your support is very much appreciated.